Hello and welcome back to Cal Radio Expanded. We're here at Tia. I've got to move relatively quickly here because we are just about to hit the war exhaustion threshold, which may indeed cause an immediate peace agreement. Now, one thing that I would love to do is get this siege done and then immediately go over to Ostakon and see if we can maybe take that as well. If we can do that, then that's going to be an absolutely wonderful sweep of, well territory capture and there's really nothing they can do about it which is absolutely fantastic that's the kind of thing we really really want to do but they i believe have about 81 war exhaustion so it very much depends on how much this siege is going to affect that if their siege gives them hmm, i'm thinking Maybe like 10. I, I don't really know how much each um, each thing costs in terms of war exhaustion, you know. If it's a field battle or, you know, if it depends on the amount of units lost or something like that, then obviously this siege is going to be pretty harsh because there's about 500 units here. And that's not so good, you know. Losing that amount of units is definitely going to be a big, big hit to them. And their war exhaustion is going to skyrocket. But at at some times uh, that we've that we've had, I've done very large battles, and I've just seen their you know seen the enemy's war exhaustion you know whoever that was at the time, just go up by about six or five, and that's not bad at all. I think that that's actually okay, and we might indeed be able to have a good old go at uh, at Ostakan, and I would very much like to do that. But of course, we're just going to wait and see. We're just going to wait and see what happens. It obviously also depends on if we have any our, uh, any of our uh, allied armies around in the area. Because if we do, then of course they are also attempting to eliminate people and indeed destroy their armies and maybe raid some villages. I don't know whether raiding villages actually does contribute to war exhaustion as well. I assume it does, but it's probably going to be a very small amount that it would contribute but well we can only hope that it's going to be okay i'm going to get out my crossbow here see if we can maybe shoot that guy yes there we go thank you very much for that and maybe i can get another shot if i just mm, i think the angle here is basically impossible maybe i can shoot through the wood i mean that's the one thing that i don't think is um is available in the game at the moment I don't think they allow you to shoot through things if it's quite clearly supposed to be a barrier. I think you can if there's a decent gap, but obviously the angle that I was attempting to use there definitely didn't give me such a gap, so obviously that's not going to happen. I'm going to defend these stairs for the moment and see if we can maybe do some damage here. I will hope that we will be able to do something. Oh, it seems like they're going up there. Okay, yeah, that's actually fantastic for us. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, going for going for those uh, four, forehand attacks. Probably not the best idea because they are basically just going to block those with their shield extremely easily. And that's something that I definitely do not want. So I'm just going to go up here, see if we can maybe do a little bit of backhand. There we go. Backhand slash seems to make a little bit more of an impact. And I'm going to attempt to do the same thing here. Basically, if you eliminate any of the enemy that is attempting to control these pieces of siege equipment, then they are going to be driven by some kind of instinct to rush over there as fast as they possibly can. And, well, they're going to ignore basically anything along the way, as you can quite clearly see. Look at these guys. They're literally just running into my blade at this point and they do not care one bit whether I slay them or not. And that's something that you can do if you are wanting to level your sword up or level your weapon type, whatever it may be. You can literally just make it so that they have a piece of siege equipment that needs to be manned, and you can just wait nearby. And don't worry, there's going to be a couple of people coming your way, and then you're going to be able to get some decent skill up as a result of that. Me, unfortunately, not going to be getting any skill ups whatsoever because my one-handed is actually maxed out as far as I'm aware. So that is, of course, not going to really be contributing at all to my level up. But if I were to get a two-handed sword, well, that would be a very different thing. If I got a two-handed sword, then that would actually make a little bit of a difference and I might even be able to level up once again 
Because I think we're kind of maxed out right now. That's the main problem, you see, about having, um, you know, only a couple of things that you focus on. Because you're not going to have many ways of getting that experience. But, of course, does it really matter in the grand scheme of things? Because I do have a decent skill set at the moment. I don't think I have anything to really be concerned about. Most of my skills are re re relatively good, reasonable, you know, most of the time. And I shouldn't really have to worry about them at all, you know. The only thing that I might have to worry about is maybe scouting, maybe some engineering, maybe medicine a little bit. But these are, of course, all secondary slash tertiary skills, and most of them are not going to be required to actually create a relatively strong warrior character. Because, of course, what you need for that is, well, athletics. Of course, athletics I have basically none of. Or riding, in that case. Or uh, just generally some pretty decent combat skills, and I think we have some good ones. So, you know, that's not too bad. My crossbow skill, for example, is pretty nice. Most of the time I am able to kill people in one or maybe two hits. Usually I'm able to deal one-shot kills almost all the time, which of course is definitely great. Uh, you know, for a crossbow that's absolutely fantastic. Because that's going to result in you having to spend a lot less time reloading, a lot less time picking a new target and so on. And then you will be rest assured that you have just taken out an enemy that is no doubt going to be dealing some damage to your forces. And you want to try and reduce as much damage taken as possible. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be happening here as you can see right now. We've lost 45 units. 45 units so far have fallen. And I am not a big fan of that. So I'm going to see if I can maybe do a little bit more here. And go in. This is obviously risky. Definitely something you don't want to do if you are worried about getting taken down. Or if you are the linchpin in your army's strength. Because here's the thing. If I stick around here and they get another reinforcement wave, they're going to be right on top of me. And that's going to be something very problematic indeed. Dependent on, of course... A variety of factors but most of the time if you do that you're gonna get swarmed and probably killed that's happened to me multiple times in the past but you know it's uh, maybe worth it some of some of the time as you can see right here we're eliminating quite a few of the enemy and I'm just gonna go zoom zoom mode and I'm just gonna get off to the side here and that's gonna be a victory for us so that is Tier, we've taken that. Tier Arm, I believe it's called in Calradia Expanded, but in Warband, of course, because Bannerlord is set before Warband, technically, in the chronology, then that's really cool. That's really nice, and we're done. So now we've taken Tier Arm, and we're going to hopefully be able to move on to Ostakan. I'm going to show mercy here. I'm going to claim the fief. And I'm also going to be selling the prisoners. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and do the garrison. Obviously, this is what we always do. I'm going to get about 350 troops or so. And then we're going to go for tier 5. And that seems pretty good to me. Now, we're just going to wait here for some time. Because I do need to restore my forces. And I need to restore... Ah, there we go. All right. There's the peace agreement. Yeah. So the peace agreement did come in. Unfortunately, they did manage to take Sargef before the peace agreement was forced through, which I gotta say is extremely irritating to me. But, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. You're not really able to decide when war exhaustion comes in or not. And in this case, of course, it came in at a pretty bad point because I would have loved to have taken Sargeth back. But, of course, we were focusing on Tia, which is not that big a deal, because now my improved garrisons mod is going to be able to do its thing over there, and we should have a pretty reasonable garrison by the time the Cortanians decide to declare war again, which is no doubt going to be quite soon. At least I think it will be quite soon, but maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll take a bit of a break. It really depends, you know, it depends on their exuberance, it depends on their confidence level, of course. Anyway, we're now at war against the... So, what's the southern empire yes it seems like indeed we are oh actually no the calradian empire mm. technically they are the southern empire if you're playing the base game without calradia expanded installed but these are the calradian empire so this is going to be interesting because i don't think we've ever fought them before they've been a little bit on the back burner most of the time they have been 
I think, attacked by quite a few different factions, and that has caused them to take a back seat in the majority of this campaign, and, and that's the reason why we haven't seen them at all. But you know what? Well, you know what I'm gonna do right now. I'm actually just gonna, just gonna take a quick look and see if there's any support for war elsewhere. So I'm having a look. See here. Okay. So ah, Western Empire is a hundred percent chance. Okay. Anyone else? I mean, you can see here. Look at the Batanians. They are basically done. That's one army that they, they have right there. One army or a handful of vassals with very small armies. Either way, doesn't really matter. They seem to be basically out of it. And then the Vegias, look at this, the Vegias, they still have 522, and there is a 100% chance for support on the war there. So technically we could do that as well. But you can see here that most enemies, apart from the Palatians, are underneath 5,000 combat strength. And the Vegias themselves, well you may be asking, do they have a fief? Well yes they do. They have one all the way over here. But of course, is it worth me declaring war against the Vagias just for one fief when we already have a bunch of other enemies to focus on. Well, I don't think so. At the moment, I don't think it is worth it. I think the Vagias will probably be a target of ours sometime in the near future. Maybe when we've returned over there to, uh, you know, fight the Cortanians, or maybe if the Nordlings decide to declare war against us or something like that, then of course it will happen at that point. But at this point, I think we'll probably try to just focus on the Calradian Empire. And I'm just going to sell a bunch of my stuff here because I don't know whether you've noticed, but I'm actually losing a huge amount of cash. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem going forward. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to sell more of my loot. And there we have it. I actually do need to buy some food as well. So let me see if I can buy a little bit of that too and then we'll be okay just gonna get all the butter all the cheese olives dates meat and then the grapes there we go that seems pretty nice to me and then we're gonna go over uh, i'd like to take a on if at all possible because that is something that i took a while ago and of course it has now switched hands multiple times i believe it was under the control of the hmm was it the Western Empire, actually? Was it the Western Empire or was it someone else? It might have been... Yeah, I think it was the Western Empire. And it seems like the Calradian Empire have taken that. Ah, hello there. All right, so here we go. We're going to go into a battle against Sicanus's army. I'm not really liking this for a variety of reasons. And I'm not entirely sure whether I should even go for this. I'm thinking, hey, you know what? Let's not get involved at the moment, and let's see if I can just chase him off. Yes, it seems like we are able to chase him off, because here's the thing. Whenever I have gone into a battle to defend a village, or indeed if someone has attacked me while I have been raiding a village, it has never really worked out in my favor. Sometimes it does, of course, if we so dramatically counter the opponent in basically every single aspect, you know, if we just outnumber them and, you know have much more strength than them, and so on, then obviously that's perfectly fine. But I really do not like fighting in villages. Oh yeah, I really do not like fighting in villages. It is a huge infuriation for me. It's just, it, it makes me furious to fight in those close quarters. Because on the one hand, there's just so many different little things that you can run over and run into, and... If you run into one of those fences, for example, or maybe like a, I don't know, a wheelbarrow or a, a cart or something, and then you get shot in the face, then you think to yourself, oh, if only I hadn't fought in this village, then it would have, well, probably made all the difference in the world, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So yeah, this is much nicer. Just look at how cool this is. A really nice open battlefield. It's been a, been a while, actually, since we've done a um an actual battle you know usually we're just doing siege after siege after siege because that's generally how things tend to go in the late game but it's very nice that we're actually able to do something here and especially it's really nice to be able to use my lance once again because i've actually missed it i've missed using the lance of destiny because it is just so much fun to use Anyway, I'm just going to go... Oh, loose formation already done. Fantastic. Yeah, I put my people into auto-delegate, and it seems like the AI also concurs with my idea 
that um, loose formation is really, really good for archers because, of course, that does uh, provide a much wider field of view for these guys because if they're in line formation, it's going to be very difficult for them to shoot mm, at a much wider area because on the one hand, if you think if you think about it, you know, most people in a line formation are going to be standing relatively close to each other and that's going to make things very difficult for archers especially. Where are the enemies, by the way? Oh, oh, they've gone into the... Oh, oh, I see. I see how they're doing it. Okay, yes, they are actually moving into the tree line. That is extremely fiendish of them. Well, I can't really do much about that, with the exception of just uh, going pokey-pokey with my own lance. And we'll see what we can do, but yeah. Generally, loose formation is the way to go, in my opinion at least, with archers. Of course, uh, unless you're maybe getting assaulted by a bunch of cavalry or something like that, you know. And then you need to be a bit tighter in your formation to make sure that the cavalry doesn't just charge straight through you with their lances or something like that and you can actually stop them but of course in that aspect you're going to need to make a couple of other adjustments as well so it's not just about the formation in that case anyway we are hopefully not gonna die here i would appreciate it actually if i would uh, survive there we go Oh, oh, they're actually moving. I'm surprised. Okay, I really did not anticipate for them to move. I think that this is a big mistake on their part. I'm going to go into shield wall formation. I don't know whether that's going to make any difference, but I'm going to hope that maybe it will. Maybe it will improve our survivability. Gotta be careful here. Gotta be careful. These guys are bound to have some thrown weapon specialists, so I should be a little bit careful about that. I'm going to tell my people to charge in now. Because I am distracting the archers somewhat. And maybe it's going to make a bit of a difference. This is very difficult to actually fight these guys on this uh, on this hilltop here. Very, very tricky. Anyway, we're going to go back into a line formation now because I have told them to charge. And if they are going to chase after a number of enemies, we cannot have them moving at a snail's pace. And shield wall formation is definitely that. I think that's all she wrote. I think I just need to go for a little bit of zoom zoom action right here and then we should be able to eliminate the last of the enemy forces. At least as far as I'm aware they're not going to receive any more reinforcements. If they did receive more reinforcements then I might think a little bit differently about this but thankfully as you can see right there we lost actually not even that many which I'm very pleased about because I thought to myself hmm are we actually losing more people than I thought but no no it seems like we're actually doing okay in that regard. All right, so this is a uh, this is basically the first time we fought against the Calradian Empire, isn't it? So I'm actually kind of worrying about whether I should take them prisoner or not. Because here's the thing: obviously, you know what I've been doing this entire campaign so far, and that is to let every single one of these guys go. 
And I'm thinking we're going to continue along that way. But I was just trying to remember if I could think about their, their territory. Is their territory significantly larger than I thought? Do they have like, I, I think they have four towns. I think they have about four towns and five castles or something like that. So I think it is okay to let them go, at least for the moment. Because what I would like to do is, of course, once again, try to do a little bit of bartering with them. Maybe we can get one of them to actually join us, to join our faction. And maybe in this case, I would also be able to give them some fiefs. So I'm thinking we might try to do that. And you may be asking yourself, well, which, uh, w w w w you know, who are you talking about specifically? Well, I'm thinking this guy. Let me see. Let me see here. Lek. Hello, Lek. Can I not send a message? Why can't I send a messenger to him? That's my, see, this is, what, this is what I'm talking about. Why can I not send a messenger to him? That's very strange. I don't know why I would not be able to do that. That doesn't really make any sense. But basically what I wanted to do was basically give him a fief. So for example, I would give him something like, um, I, I don't even know, to be honest. Maybe give him something like Sionan or uh, Revel, potentially. Revel is really close by. So it might make sense for me to give him something like that if he ends up joining our faction. Then that would make sense, right? I think that would make quite a bit of sense. So it would be quite nice if we could pull that off. But of course, he is not accepting any messengers right now, which is still, in my opinion, kind of weird. Don't know why that is, but I guess we'll just check in, in a second after I've um, restored some of our forces or something, and then we'll... Maybe uh, make a go of it at that point. Drovraz Castle has been under siege once again because, of course, we are at war against the Azerai, but we shouldn't really worry about that too much. All right, so let's do a little bit of uh, recruiting here. And what I'm going to do... Did, did these guys lose a huge amount of units? Yeah, look at that. He lost a massive amount. I have no idea how he does that. But every single time, he seems to lose massive amounts of units. Oh well, never mind. He has some really, really uh, good ones as well. He's got tier 5, tier 4 units. I mean, shouldn't be, shouldn't be too, uh, too easy for him to lose units. Oh wow, we've got a lot of tier 1s right here. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have taken all these tier 1s, to be honest. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to put those back into the garrison in just a second. There we go. They're, they're going to need to be upgraded or something like that. And we're just going to stick with what we have right here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I got a decent amount of food and everything. Let's head on to, um, where is it? Lycaron? Yeah, let's head on to Lycaron. I'm actually going to see if I can maybe do battle with this guy. I'm, uh, you know what? Let, let me actually just take a quick look here. Is he, oh no, he's a, uh, he's a mercenary actually. He's the leader of these mercenaries. Okay, now that's interesting. Can I, mm, no, I can't do anything to him unfortunately gonna go for a nice little auto resolve here just to get him out the way as fast as we possibly can and there are a bunch of other people in the area as well but i shouldn't have to worry if they're mostly from the mercenary company mercenary companies are not that difficult to deal with but if they all gang up against me right now then we might have some issues but that doesn't seem to be the case. There's 300 in Lycaron right now. Do you think I can take... Uh, actually, only 200. Are you really wanting to fight me that badly? Are these guys really thinking about that? That's actually kind of weird. I would not have expected them to do that at all. I would have thought to myself, hmm, it would probably make more sense for them to go elsewhere. But apparently not. Never mind. Okay, apparently they were too late. They were certainly too late for them to do anything. But I guess that just gives us more of an advantage because then I'm going to be able to get into the walls and, well, if they want to try and take this back, this is going to be very difficult for them. Unless they turn up, of course, with a, an army of over a thousand or something like that. That's probably going to be, I mean, technically they could probably turn up with about 600, maybe 700 and be able to take it without too many difficulties. And I'm talking about if I'm actually inside. If I'm inside the garrison, then of course, they're going to need slightly more units than they would normally. But in general, even if they had, I don't know, even if they had 600, 700, if I'm by myself with none of my party members in my army, 
then I'm only going to have an army of about 240, and if there's a garrison of 150 or so, then that's about 400 units. And that's not really going to give a massive amount of security to the garrison, so we're probably going to end up suffering a defeat there, but that is only if we are, are alone, you know. And that has happened in the past, where I have been alone, and I've suffered at the hands of our enemies, which obviously is definitely not the goal here, so hopefully we'll see a little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit of action. It would be pretty cool to get some siege defense going on, actually. I feel like siege defense would be so fun to do, because there are so many, so many very enjoyable things that you can partake in in a siege defense. I mean, you you know, you have stones here that you can use with the catapult. You obviously have a ballista as well. And generally, you're going to be able to push the enemy's ladders as well, because of course, I don't know whether you realize, but these uh, these enemies right here. I mean, I think uh, I think some people have actually mentioned this in the past, but generally Enemies do have the ability to push siege ladders off the walls. They can do that, but they just choose not to, or they just don't have the opportunity to do so. Probably because they are too slow to employ that particular strategy, or just generally because they have their hands full attempting to attack something, and they forget, or just choose not to do that with their time. But where is the ladder? There we go. There, there is the ladder right here. And as you can see, you see this little thing right here? This thing, it's a fork, apparently. That's what it's called. And this fork you can use to push the ladder off the wall. And that is going to result in, obviously, you know, enemies not being able to use the ladder any further. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing that I would love to be able to do in these kinds of siege defenses. But, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have an opportunity to do that. It seems like the AI is a bit too cautious in launching siege offenses that they are maybe unlikely to win. So that's the reason why that's happening. Anyway, gonna claim this once again, even though I am literally claiming every single thing in existence at this point, but it's kind of necessary, at least I think so. And there we have it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in here because I literally just wanna wait. And we're going to see what these guys end up doing. I, I'm going to assume that they're going to just run away. Because there's no army. They have no army made or anything like that. They probably don't have um, too much influence or anything like that. So yeah, they're just going to make their way elsewhere. So now let's actually just take a quick look at the Calradian Empire. And how they're doing. As you can see. Vostrum. Mantola. Danustica. Onira. And that's it. Those are the four towns that they have, apart from Lycaron, obviously, which I just took. And then, what castles do they have? Because as far as I can tell, they only have one. No, no, they have two. Yes, they have two. So they have Sogil as well as Metakia. Okay. That's it? Hmm. That doesn't seem too bad. And the Azariah are also looking pretty weakened right now as well. As you can see, they just have Kasira, Medini Castle, Iakis, and Aridayar, which is, uh, which is it. That's it. That's all they have. So there are a lot of factions that are looking very, very much on the knife's edge. Or shall we say the razor's edge. <laughs> yes. And those ones will inevitably be falling before us quite fast. But we're going to have to struggle quite a bit against the Calradian Empire, in my opinion. Their combat strength is looking pretty good. Yeah, as you can see. This is relatively similar to, to what the Palatians currently have. Actually, the Palatians are much stronger. But we're going to have our hands full with the Calradian Empire. Even though, as you can quite clearly tell, our faction has amazing amounts of combat strength. But I believe that does take into account the various garrisons that you have in the territory. So, if you think about all my fiefs, do you see all my fiefs right here? The bear icon? Yeah, these are all mine. So, that's the reason why the combat strength of our faction is so incredibly large. Because all of my garrisons are contributing to that. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.